If you love your business, if you love your clients, you're going to make the sacrifices. And I learned the lesson that God cares more about the business and the vision than I do. God says, it's it's time for you to stop believing in me and it's actually time for you to start following me. So what are your thoughts about, you know, where capitalism is in America today? Because yeah. you're a capitalist. I mean, you're Absolutely. taking capital. And, but they're talking about this whole socialistic programs that's going on in America today and, and, and how should we as believers mm -hmm. perceive what's going on in our country through, yes. through that lens. So one of, one of the big epiphanies and one of the things I've learned recently is how do we play in God's economy and okay. not man's economy? Correct. You know, how do we operate our business as if it is on earth, you know, on earth as it is in, in heaven. heaven. Yeah, nice. You know, so, you know, I'm, if anyone that watches my videos will know I'm a, I'm a very anti-socialism individual. I, I'm a big advocate of capitalism. You know, a big advocate. And the, one of the reasons why I, I'm so against socialism because, you know, at the end of the day, it, it promotes laziness. It does, whether people like it or not. You know, I saw a quote where it says, the problem with socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Which is, there's some truth to that, yeah, you know. Yeah. Now, I, I, I understand why people in my generation push socialism so much. Because, yeah. you know, as, I don't know if you've been noticing, but millennials, Gen Z, the younger we get, it just seems that the the popularity of socialism, especially it's, it's democratic more, socialism, yeah, is yeah. getting more and more and yeah. more and more. So the reason why I don't like socialism is because for me, I'm, I'm always around what is the spirit telling me? Because I've learned through many hard and difficult paths and, and really through surrender that my job at the end of the day is to align with God's heart. It's to walk with the spirit every single day, to see you, Matt Zappala, as the way God sees you. And not only that, but to have God's heart for Matt Zappala. You know, and nice. to, to everybody, even you you're telling me about your buddy Patrick, right? How mm -hmm. he's, he loves asking questions. He's a, he's a truth seeker. Yeah. You know, if he was here right in front of us, I'd tell him, dude, keep seeking the truth because I believe that all truth leads to Jesus Christ. You know, and, and, and you will have more intimacy with the Father than going to church on Sunday morning yeah. Yeah. in doing so. Yeah. I would actually applaud him. And, and give him a high five. You know, I mean, he's six five, so I have to. You know, what I mean, I have BBD. to like, That's yeah, right. that BBD, right? <laughs> yeah, I had to go all the way up. You know, but but it, you know, if, if you look at scripture, it how often does Jesus end the parable with you know, and it says, and the master says, you lazy, ungrateful servant, you will be thrown out where there is darkness and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, it's Matthew twenty five right there. Matthew yeah, twenty five, yeah, yeah. right? There's there's three or four different parables where Jesus yeah. talks about that, yeah. but understandably so, right? Our generation and Gen Z. The reason why they love socialism so much is because of exactly kind of what we allude to. They see so much pain in this world. And then they sure. see these millionaires and billionaires, right? Or yeah. Bernie would say, yeah. millionaires, <laughs> billionaires, right? Driving around in yachts and all this stuff. And they're like, well, why don't these people just help? And, you know, we should yeah. tax them. And that's going to solve everything, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not necessarily true, yeah. right? The biggest problem that I would actually say that is occurring in America right now is division. Huge. Division. Yep. You know, it's not the United States yes. of America. That's what makes America great. The United yeah. States. Everybody's together. Yeah. And I would say a lot of the problems won't be solved by the unity of, you know, black or white, uh, male and female, right, uh, Democrat or, or conservative. I would actually say that a vast majority, if not all problems, would be solved if simply business leaders and politicians started working together. If they started working together, I'm convinced that a vast majority of problems in the United States would be solved. Because a lot of times individuals who work in, you know, the public sector or work in politics, and I'm not talking down, mm -hmm. but a lot of times they don't possess the problem solving abilities that entrepreneurs have. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times entrepreneurs see policymakers as, oh, people that are just in the way, yeah. you know, people who don't know what they're doing. People who are, So I'm convinced that there was some unity there. I think that'd be a fantastic, fantastic change. Oftentimes people watch this video and see where you're at, see where your YouTube yeah. channel is at, and read your book. And people say, well, so so easy for you, Daniel. It's easy for you to say that because, you know, you're well off. You got things going for you. Could you please uh, cut through the noise and yeah. tell everybody the real deal? What did you start with? How did you get your real estate investing career? Yeah. And you, now your equity fund. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rolling. So, I mean, I grew up very poor. I, like I said, an immigrant, right? I mean, I, I remember getting made fun of because I'd wear the same clothes to mm -hmm. school. And, you know, I remember there was we, our parents, my family, we'd sleep in the car multiple nights, couldn't afford to pay a heating bill, yeah. right? You know, yeah, February, the car was hot, yeah, yeah. yeah, 100%. Was warm, yeah. You know, I remember there was one time, you know, we all went to the park. And my mom, I saw her picking weeds and flowers, and she was putting them in the plastic containers. I'm like, oh, that's cute. He must be giving it to my dad. You know, I wonder if it's their anniversary. You know, it's, it's great. And then, and then two hours later, I saw that on our dinner plate. And that's all we had, you know. So, again, fast forward 18, 
negative $187.65 in my bank account, maxed out credit cards. And that right there, that's how God got my attention. Because Jesus says, all right, Daniel, you know the Bible super well. And I do. I read the Bible at this point probably eight to ten times over. Sure. You know, my dad's got a doctorate in biblical studies, right? I mean, very well-educated man. Mm -hmm. And God says, it's, it's time for you to stop believing in me, and it's actually time for you to start following me. Right, it, it's, it's a mindset shift. Are you ready to actually start following me now? And I said, oh, yeah. okay, great. So I researched when I was 17 years old, because again, I wanted to, at that point, I wanted to do a lot of things for God. I researched uh, what was the number way, one way of people making money, and it was real estate, right? That's how the top 1% made the vast majority of their money. And I looked up who owned the Chicago Bulls, this guy named Jerry mm -hmm. Reinsdorf, mm -hmm. and I saw that, I read his biography, I was like, this guy made his money in real estate. So I, for, you know, I always had in the back of my mind, real estate, real estate, real estate. And so uh, I prayed, you know, when I saw that negative number in my bank account, went to that financial predicament, you know, I, I surrendered it all. I said, all right, God, I'm going to start following you. Six months later, I met a guy who was willing to take me under his wing and I would work for free. You know, part of the reason why people aren't successful is they're too cool. Right? They're too cool. They're like, oh, I don't want to be in that. You know, I don't want to go to that meeting or yeah. I don't want to, you know, yeah. they're too cool for school, yeah. you know. And so uh, I, I work for free. You know, I, I paid wow. thousands of dollars at the time. My brother and I actually called our credit card company to beg them to increase the line so we could pay for education to learn how to do this thing. Yeah. So, you know, long before that, I started, you know, following and following and, and I started reading and I'd get up, you know, I, I would get up at six, seven in the morning, wouldn't go to sleep till one or two at night. The entire time I would learn about real estate. I would learn about investing, yeah. macroeconomics, hundred percent. You know, why, what is, what is inflation? What is, what is yeah. quantitative easing? What's policy, you know, monetary policy, fiscal policy. Yeah. And I remember being 22 years old and I, I remember being, uh, if not the smartest, one of the smartest guys in every single room I walked in when it came to real estate and investing. But I made zero money. And but I you got, knew everything though. But I knew everything though. Okay. And I became very frustrated. And whenever I'm frustrated, I go to, I go to you know, God. Because you know, that's just who I go to when I, whenever I'm happy, mad, say, right? I think we should treat our heavenly father like our actual father, right? Or the father that we never had, unfortunately. You know, mm -hmm. I have to say that mm -hmm. now in America. Yeah. Um, and so I, 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 I got very frustrated. And then God took me to John chapter 13. And John chapter 13 is one of my most favorite chapters in the Bible because it shows you who Jesus really was. So word for word, it's a story how Jesus and his disciples are in the Passover feast. They're walking into this room. And scripture actually says at this moment, Jesus had realized that the Father had put everything under his authority and that he was from the Father and he was returning to the Father. Meaning that Jesus realizes that he's the most powerful being in the universe. Right? He's stronger than Superman, Batman, Iron Man, Thanos, <laughs> you name it. Right? Um, and what he does next, and scripture says, so, as so, cause and effect, he begins to remove his outer clothing, brings out a basin of water, and he begins to wash the feet of his disciples. Right, which, by the way, people don't understand, washing the feet at that time was the, the, the lowest ranking slave, not even servant, slave. That was the job for the lowest ranking slave to do. And for him, it was very awkward for him to do that. Right, they're like, Rabbi, you don't do that. And so what the Spirit spoke to me then was, Daniel, your problem is that you have a very good mind, but whenever you walk out of a room, the people's feet are still dirty. Mm. Everybody around you still has dirty feet. That's the problem. And so whenever I get a lesson from God, I ask the Holy Spirit on how I can apply it. Because at the end of the day, like people are like, Daniel, how do I get closer to God? I ask him. You know, the person that knows best on how to get closer to God is God. Right? Uh, that's why he sacrifices something. Right? And by the way, I believe that the truest form of love is sacrifice. If you love your business, if you love your clients, sure. you're going to make the sacrifices. Sure. God cares more about the business and the vision than I do. Right? Like, I think if you're a parent watching this right now, if you're a dad, if you're a mom, I think we need to have the realization that God loves your kids more than you do. <laughs> that God wants to see your kids succeed in life more than you do, more than you could possibly ever imagine. You know, and if you think about that, oh, man, that's, that's, that's big. And, and, you know, because for us as entrepreneurs, we have a lot of times the same desire. We want to change the world based on how we desire it to be. We want to see for you. You want to see a world where people are more aware of the the power of the of insurance. And we talk about all the time the power of whole life cash value insurance. How that, in my opinion, should take over the four hundred one k industry. You know. Yeah. I, I see a yeah. vision where the American family can have comfortable conversations about finances around the dinner table. Because I didn't have that. You didn't mm -hmm. have that. People mm -hmm. in this room didn't have that. Right. You know. So for for me, it's just like, well, that's the vision. God cares more about the business than I do. If you're watching and you're an 18 year old kid or a 19 year old kid or you're young, and you know, because I get that question a lot, I was yeah. like, Daniel, should I go? Because I'm a dropout. I dro I've dropped out my senior year of college. Nope. Okay. Yeah. And and so people ask me, should I go to college? I I tell them, here's what I would do. If you're looking to be in business, 
f find somebody that, that is doing what you're doing, work for free during the nighttime, audit certain college classes, like accounting, yeah. business law, yeah. you know, um, management, right? Like th there are certain, you know, classes in college that are actually, I believe are worth it, right? But you're talking about knowledge and education versus the degree. I take education knowledge any day of the week. If I were to hire somebody today and then, you know, I had two guys, one person, like, hey, I got a college degree from Harvard. Mm -hmm. And the other person says, hey, I worked four years, you know, in this you know, industry and I worked, you know, I, I worked one year in each different office and mm -hmm. I worked for a property management firm. I worked for, you know, investment mm -hmm. firm and I got experience underwriting deals and I managed properties before. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I, you know, audited accounting. Hire that kid right yeah. there on the spot. Yeah. On the spot. Right, before anybody else takes him. Yeah. You know? So that, that'd be my message to 18, 19 year old kids for, for a lot of them to ask me like, hey, how do I break into real estate? How can I eventually do what you're doing? Yeah. You know, 